Hi there, my name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoben's Nest. I'm starting off this first project by painting three of these pumpkins black. The reason I'm doing that is the orange one will probably bleed through if I paint it white right off the bat and I want all of them to have the same tone of white. I like to put my pumpkins on a skewer so I can easily hang onto it and then when I'm done painting and it needs to dry, I can just stick it in that piece of foam that you see in the right bottom corner. It's an ugly piece of foam, but it does the trick. I missed filming this part, but I did paint all of the pumpkins with a color called parchment. It's sort of an antique white kind of color. And I just had them on the skewers again and then just made sure that they were nice and dry. Now I'm taking this little basket that I got at the thrift store for $1.99. It had these leather handles and I don't want them. They look a little too big for the size of this basket. So I'm just going to remove them with this little tool. I found this out in my husband's toolbox and I stole it from him. I'm sure he's not using it to pull out staples, but I found that this is a really awesome tool for pulling out staples, especially on canvases and things like that. So what I'm going to do first is take a large bamboo skewer. Now this one is fairly thick and what I'm going to do is just poke it into the top of this bottom pumpkin. I ended up with four here. I decided that for the size of the basket I needed a larger pumpkin for the bottom. So now I'm going to take this skewer and I'm just going to push it very gently through until it comes out the top. And this is just going to help to stabilize my pumpkins and make sure that they don't fall over or fall off. I didn't want to just use hot glue. I'm also leaving a bit of a space in between the pumpkins because I want to be able to embellish a little bit more than you normally would if you stack them all together. What I am using the hot glue for is just to put a dab of glue on the skewer where it enters and exits the pumpkins. And that will just make sure again that they're going to stay in place and they won't fall down. I was hoping that I would have some extra Spanish moss because I think that would probably work better with pumpkins, but I didn't have any. So I have told myself for fall this year, I'm going to be working with everything that I have in my stash and I'm going to try real hard not to go to any stores and buy anything new to use. So that's why I'm just going to use this reindeer moss that I have. And I think it turned out really nice with this because the green was a beautiful accent color to the white. I'm going to take chunks of this moss and glue it in between the pumpkins and kind of try and fill up that space a little bit. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because I'll be adding some other embellishments as well. I'm sure you've already guessed that I'm making a sweet little pumpkin topiary. That's what they're called. So what I'm going to do now is take some of this greenery. I have a bush up in the right hand corner there and I'm going to be taking sprigs off of that. And I wanted the sprigs to kind of fall down on one side. So I'm just going to alternate sides as I move up the pumpkins. I'm also going to make sure that the little strands or the little sprigs aren't sticking out too much. So I do end up taking a little bit more hot glue and just kind of rounding them down and gluing them on top of the pumpkin just so they don't stick out so much. For my pumpkin's little stem, I've got a stick here that I'm just going to cut a piece off of. I'm going to add some reindeer moss first and then I'll glue the stick down. And I cut it where there was a little V in the branch and I just thought that would add a little bit more character to the stem. Once the stem was dry, I took a little tiny piece of these little green sprigs more towards the end of it where it's a little bit of a lighter color and I just hot glued that into place. I want to keep this topiary on the neutral side so I found these little flowers in my stash and I'm going to just glue one bunch of them 
to each of the leaves all the way up the topiary. And then when I get to the top, I'm just going to take a little tiny sprig of the flower and add that to the top just so it is a smaller bunch and it looks a little bit better in proportion to the mini pumpkin. Now I'm going to add a little tiny bit of color with these little styrofoam beads. I got these from a garland. Again, it was in my stash. I keep going down to the basement where I have my storage space and kind of going through all the bags of my fall stuff. I'm going to continue to add these and then I'm also going to add some of those little acorns that you see there. Those came from my oak tree a couple of years ago. The acorns have not been able to grow since because the squirrels keep chewing them up before they even have a chance to grow. But I still have quite a few hanging around. So I'm going to use those to add a little bit more of a rustic look to this topiary. Once I had all of the acorns there, there were still a few little spots where you could see too much of the reindeer moss. So I just took a few more little sprigs and added them to the topiary wherever I thought it needed a little bit more filler. So now I've got my basket and I added a piece of floral foam just a little bit bigger than the basket so I could wedge it in nicely. I didn't want to add any glue or anything to this basket because at some point I may want to use it for some different type of decor. And yes, if you're wondering, this craft is a keeper. I am not selling this one. I am in totally in love with how this turned out and this is going to be in my home for the holidays this year. So I'm just going to take these skewers now and dunk them into some of my weld bond glue because hot glue doesn't work very well with floral foam. <clears throat> and now I'm going to just place it where I need it to be and make sure that it's facing the way I want it to face. And then I can just very easily push the stems right into the floral foam. And then once the glue dries, it will hold them in place. Next, I'm going to take some of those greenery sprigs and do the same thing. Just dunk the end of them into the weld bond glue and then push it into the floral foam. Now, I decided that I wanted them to kind of hang over the edge, so I just had to flip this one over. But all of these sprigs kind of have a downward bend to them, so it, that worked out really well. Here's how this topiary turned out. I am in love. Let me know what you think of this one. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank all of my subscribers. I really appreciate you watching and for your support. I am so grateful. If you like what you see so far, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. This next project is a bit of a flip. I'm taking some of this floral foam again and I'm using just an old serrated knife. That's the perfect thing to get these cut because it's so nice and soft. I also found all of this floral foam at the thrift store and look at how easy you can just kind of shave it down when you're using a serrated knife. So I am pushing this into this vintage old sewing machine drawer box. I picked up four of these from a Facebook marketplace from a gentleman and at the time he also had some live edge wood slabs so I did grab myself one of those and I will be doing a project with that one probably in the near future. Again I'm just going to take the knife and just kind of shave off the excess that I don't want just to make sure that the foam is even with the drawer. For this project too, I don't want to use any glue. I don't want to get anything like that on this sewing machine drawer. It's absolutely beautiful and it might end up getting repurposed into something completely different down the road. I also decided that I didn't want to paint it. I thought for fall decor, it was beautiful just the way it is. 
So what I'm doing here is taking some wire and bending it into a U shape and then just using that to poke the floral foam with the reindeer moss or poke the reindeer moss into the floral foam. That's what I wanted to say. And this will just be a really easy thing to do. I'm just going to go all the way around the outside. Here's my reindeer moss. I've got it all set up and now I'm going to add some of these leaves. Now I know they're not real apple leaves but they were the closest that I had. Again using stuff from my stash. I'm just going to be poking them into the floral foam but I don't want anything to stick up too much. So I'm going to make sure that any of the leaves or sprigs that are sticking up I'm just going to pull those off and then just put them in different spots. For these leaves, I'm kind of going to do a symmetrical pattern with them. I don't want it to be too off kilter. So I'm just going to kind of go from side to side and front to back and add the leaves where I think they look good. One of the other ways that you can help support my channel is by hitting the like button, especially if you like what you see. It gets me noticed more on YouTube and then more people see my content. It really helps a lot. Now that I have the leaves arranged the way I want them, I'm going to grab these slippery apples and stick them in the floral foam too. I added some bamboo skewers to the bottom of them and that will be an easy way to just poke them in. I'm going to play around with the arrangement until I like it and then I'm going to add a few other embellishments to it. One thing to remember when you're making floral arrangements or fruit arrangements like this, you don't have to follow any hard and fast rules. All you have to do is make it look the way you like it. That's the most important thing. The final touch on the arrangement part of this project is to use some of these tiny little white flowers. They're from the Dollar Tree and I bought them a while ago when I saw them. I snatched up some white ones and some pink ones and they're called little wax flowers. I don't know why they are plastic but they're really pretty and I like the lacy kind of look to them. So I'm just going to add some of the sprigs all the way through the arrangement again until I like it. So once I had the arrangement done, I thought it needed a little bit something else on it. And I know I said I wasn't going to paint it, but I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just going to put the word blessed and these two sprigs on the side of the drawer. And I'm going to use the same parchment color paint that I used for the first pumpkins. And I think it turned out really pretty. It's not over the top. There's not too much color. It's just a nice subtle way to decorate the side of this drawer. If you're wondering where I got this stencil, I got them in a pack of 12 big ones like this for $14. It's called BB Craft and I'll have the link down in my description box. And if I can find the link to these particular stencils, I'll include that as well. They have some really, really wonderful craft supplies. So make sure you go check that out. This is another beautiful project that I really hope you like. Last year I made this cute little rustic wagon just from some scrap wood and his little handle fell off so I'm going to go ahead and glue that back on. This was so cute and so much fun to make. If I can find the video I'll leave it down in my description box for you but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can kind of see how it was made right here. I'm going to take some tumbling tower blocks and glue two together for the sides and then put one on the end. I wanted to make some little side rails for this so when I add the little decorations on the inside they won't look like they're going to fall out. Well, 
what I'm going to do now is just stain him. This is a mixture of burnt umber, acrylic paint, and some water. And I'm just going to brush it on and do it as many times as I need to to get the depth of color that I'm looking for. It's not going to be exactly the same as the little wagon but it's going to be fairly close and that's good enough for me. These little bottles I got at the Dollar Tree and I figured since I use this burnt umber as a stain quite often that I would just go ahead and mix it up in this little bottle and then I can just squirt it out on my projects. It's not very messy and it goes a long way. I found this raffia on sale at Michael's. Now I'm going to break my stash rule. I did actually buy this this year, but I couldn't resist it. It was an awesome buy. There were five chunks of raffia in different colors for $5. So a buck a bundle. So I didn't think that was something that I could pass up. Anyhow, I'm just going to lay this down on the bottom of the wagon and I'm not using any glue or anything because once I start adding the little apples, that will hold the raffia in place too. I got these apples quite a few years ago from my mom when she was going through her Christmas stuff and decided that whatever these were attached to, she didn't want anymore. So I just grabbed the apples off of them. I knew at some point I would be able to use them. I have this boxwood greenery that sort of has a lamb's ear look to it. They're kind of dusted, I guess you could call it. So I'm going to give each of these little apples a little leaf. I've got two of the tumbling tower blocks and I'm just going to glue them together. And these are the little ones that you get from the Dollar Tree. I've got a whole bunch of different sizes, but these are the Dollar Tree originals. Then I'm going to take a piece of bamboo stick and you could also just use a popsicle stick and I'm going to glue it onto the back and this will become a little sign for my wagon. I like to make the stick or the stake go up a little higher than the sign because that really makes it look farmhouse and rustic. This was another clearance paint color that I got at Michael's a while ago. It's called a suede finish and I believe it's from Deco Art. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it up here on the screen. I use the same burnt umber stain for the steak. Using a regular Sharpie marker, this is just the regular kind. It's not a paint pen or anything. I'm just going to write out the word apples, five cents a pound. And then I'm going to give the letters kind of these little ticks on them to make them look a little bit more rustic. And then glue the steak onto my little wagon. And this project is done. It really turned out cute. I think it would be adorable on a tiered tray or sitting on a shelf somewhere. This project is going to utilize a two by four block, which I have in my hand here, and I'm painting it with the color clay from Martha Stewart. It is a chalk paint. I'm also going to paint the spindle piece that you see in the left bottom corner, and I'm going to use the same color for that as well. For the topper, I'm going to use this little terracotta saucer. I got them in a pack of two at the thrift store for I think it was $1.99, so it would be a buck a piece. After two coats and when they were fully dry, I'm using weld bond glue to glue all of the pieces together. This is my favorite permanent glue and it bonds to any type of surface, wood, ceramic, glass, metal, you name it, it will glue it together. I stumbled across a cool thing to do when you're trying to find the center of an object to glue on top like this. Ideally, you would want to just put the saucer upside down and then put the spindle on top, center it, let it dry. But because I'm impatient and I didn't want to let it dry upside down, I thought my, it might topple over with the weight of the 2x4. What ended up happening is I centered it this way and as I went to flip it over, of course the terracotta saucer came off but it left a glue mark so I was able to really easily get it back into the same spot using that glue mark as my guide. 
I'm definitely going to be doing that more often because a lot of times I get things crooked and I don't notice it until it's completely glued and then it's too late. To distress this and make it look like it has more of a wood look or just an aged look, I'm using some of the antique wax. I'm going to brush on a pretty good amount and then I'm going to use a paper towel to wipe off the excess. I'll do that for the bottom as well as the whole spindle itself and the terracotta saucer. I created this pumpkin last year and I'm going to make it over just a little bit. Underneath this is one of the Dollar Tree styrofoam orange pumpkins. Last year I put some spackle all over it just to kind of give it a wood texture and then I stained it with some black and brown. Now I'm just going to take my favorite fall color which is Honey Brown by Americana Paints and I'm going to just give it a heavy dry brushing with my chip brush and add some rustic color to it. I've got a bunch of corks in my stash and I use them for all sorts of things. For this cork, I'm going to use it as a pumpkin stem, but it's a little too smooth. So I'm just taking my craft knife and I'm just chipping off some pieces at the top, kind of to get it a little bit more of a rustic look, sort of like it's been torn off. And then I'm going to also angle the bottom so it sits crooked when I hot glue it onto the top. The best way to cut these corks is to just chip off little pieces at a time. You can see I'm kind of slicing and then breaking off the piece as I go. A while back, I was at the Dollar Tree and I found these wooden dice. They come three to a pack. And I thought that would be the perfect thing to make this pumpkin sit a little bit higher out of the saucer. So I just used some hot glue to put that on. And I'm going to use some hot glue just to apply the pumpkin to the top of the dice. I used some of that green raffia to tie around the top of the pumpkin. I added one of my dyed solo wood flowers as a little embellishment. And underneath the pumpkin, I added some dried Spanish moss. I really like how this one turned out. Really rustic and farmhouse. Thank you so much for spending some time today and watching my video right to the end. If you enjoyed it, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and don't forget that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.